Well, welcome everybody to this roundtable about music and tourism. Um, we are missing one speaker, which is representative of the municipality of Seville, but uh, he's on his way, so he, he should be here shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to start anyway with the speakers that we have at the moment, which are top notch. And what I'm going to do first is to let them introduce themselves, because I could introduce them myself, but I think it's going to be much more revealing if they speak themselves about who they are and about what they do. So basically what I would like us all to understand when they present, when they introduce themselves is the perspective or the point of view from which they are going to be talking about. Because we are going to be discussing certain topics and obviously each of them, depending on their background, are going to be approaching this topic from a different perspective, right? So I think it's going to be very interesting because we have people from the private sector, we have people from the public sector, and dialogue between these two sectors is going to be um, one of the important topics of the... Okay, he's our fifth speaker. <laughs> Hola, Antonio. <laughs> Acabamos de empezar. We have just started. And uh, the development of the roundtable is going to be as follows. They are going to, to introduce themselves shortly. Uh, I'm going to ask them to, to be as precise and as um, quick as possible, but uh, expressing as much as they can about what they do. Then after that, we will start with a series of questions and we will discuss about these um, certain topics. And then uh, the last part, we will um, welcome questions from the audience. So you are most welcome to reflect on things and then write them down, and then in the last part you can ask those questions, right? So, Cindy, if you want to start, please. Yes, hi, nice to see some people here right now. <laughs> uh, my name is Cindy, I'm from Mad Cool Festival in Madrid, and basically, um, well, I'm in charge of uh, booking the festival as well as many other things related to the current subject we're going to talk today about, which are accommodation for artists, uh, transportation, stuff like that. Hello, uh, my name is Albert, I'm from Mallorca, and I have a management agency who work in, uh, with emerging bands, and I have uh, another company with uh, Barcelo Group, uh, Le Musique Fest, and is a tour operator of uh, festivals and big gigs. I'm not sure if I can make it that short. <laughs> <laughs> you have time, you have time. I had allowed two minutes per person, so please. <laughs> no, my name is Ramon Marrades, I'm from Valencia. And my, my background is as an urban activist, public space activist, cultural activist as well, also a musician. And the last two years have been turned, I, I'm, I'm recently a bureaucrat as well. And I manage, I, I, I manage the institution that is in charge of managing the waterfront in Valencia, which is an area around one million square meter that many, like many other area in the world, was heavily, heavily invested, like the Expo in Sevilla, in Zaragoza, and after the big investment uh, to host big events, like American America's Cup and Formula One remain totally underused and heavily indebted as well, with 500 million euros debt. And over the last two years, we are trying to actually reconnect the, this, this space with the citizens of Valencia with a strategy of cultural activation and uses of public space, also bringing creative industries and different uses. And in, within that, music is a very, very important thing. We are using music and, and working with different Cultural, cultural uses to, to reclaim and recover those public spaces and with that also attract better business. And just say, I have to say that in the last two years we doubled the amount of people that is coming there and we increased revenue in 62%. So culture works as well from the public sector. Okay, so um, good morning everyone. My name is David Mora and I'm representing Spain Live Music. Spain Live Music is a platform that tries to, to gather different stakeholders from both worlds, tourism and the music industry, mainly to focus on the international promotion of Spain as a destination for uh, music tourism. And also we try to um, help destinations to face and uh, address the uh, spe special needs and yeah, necessities of the uh, music tourists. My name is Antonio Muñoz. I am Deputy Mayor of Seville uh, from uh, Culture and Tourism. And I, I tell you I'm sorry, but I'm going to uh, speak Spanish in my exposition. So, okay. 
Okay, so here we go with the first question. We all, we all know, especially the people who are here, how a music can contribute to the transformation, to the development of the image of a particular destination, of a particular city, of a particular country, and all the speakers here are involved in this at a, at a local level, sometimes at a national level. And uh, the first question is, how can music launch or even relaunch the image of a destination and how do you approach that from your different projects? So image, music and tourism. Okay, should I start? Yeah. Uh, well, I think mm, during the last years music and actually festivals have become a new kind of tourism because, uh, you know, 10 years ago, maybe you would go to one festival or one isolated event, but nowadays, actually, the community has grown so much and, um, and, and is enjoying so much this kind of events that they actually gather and get together to travel all around the world to visit festivals. So it has become definitely, you know, 10 years ago, we would say, hey, let's go to, um, Benidorm <laughs> and nowadays people from Belgium, Israel or wherever they get together and they say hey let's go do, to do some festivals, let's go, to, let's attend some festivals, let's do a tour and let's do five countries, six countries and you know during two or three weekends and do this. Um, therefore um, Spain has a lot of very nice things that other European countries don't have, which basically are food, climate, and you know the fact that Spanish people are actually very welcoming, which ba which makes it like a very good spot to go to well, on tourism. Um, saying this, I think uh, ga gathering this kind of events and doing this kind of events in a city, even if it's a big city or a small city definitely helps right now to place the city in a big world tourism map, which is the world of festival tourism. It definitely helps to project the image of a city. In our case, we are based in Madrid, so basically, you know, the image we try to project with Matco is, hey, we're here, Madrid is here, Madrid is not empty in July, you can come here, you can visit, you can have a good time, you can have good food, you can, you know, just, and from here travel to the rest of the Spain. Um, so I would say it has helped us a lot. Madrid, um, Madrid City, in the dates we, the, our festival takes place, um, used to be an empty, an empty city. Uh, Matt Cole right now basically leaves a very big amount of money from all the tourism, tourists that come to the city. Hotels are full, supermarkets are full, transportation is full. Um, we have 38% of foreigners coming, uh, of which basically we had around, let's say, 40,000 foreigners coming to Matco this year from all parts of the world, to be more specific, from 117 different countries. Top of them were UK, Israel, France, Mexico, mm -hmm. the US. So I think that you know having all these people coming from all over the world to a city, if it's Madrid, if it's Seville, if it's Barcelona, if it's Bilbao, wherever it is, definitely helps. Because you're discovering the city in a different way. That was my long speech. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Who wants to continue? Um, I think the, the uh, music and tourism merge just perfectly, and music gives tourism uh, three, well, three different approaches. First, music gives product to the tourism industry, more reasons, more motivations to travel, more things to do. Um, it's also a great marketing tool. Uh, destinations can convey their message through music, of course, uh, via platforms like, such as uh, Spotify and YouTube and, and so on and so forth. And then the third one would be the narrative. There are destinations, there are cities, there are places, but every destination needs to have a sense of place. So music adds, it uh, gives a great strength to those destinations with uh, such a narrative like, I don't know, Nashville, Tennessee, for example, or Dublin, 
So also it, music is, is part of the narrative. It's a way of storytelling, that, that very interesting marketing uh, technique that destinations are using. So I think that's, that's why one of the reasons why music and, and tourism merge so, 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 so great. Okay, Antonio, you wanted to... Yes, I'd like to incorporate or contribute with the experience of the city of Seville. We all know that Seville has always been a city where tourism has been key. It still is so. But tourist sectors up to now were only thinking about how to grow, how to increase the revenues obtained from tourism, either by attracting more tourists or by attracting a certain profile of uh, tourists that would be expanding more. So when we analyzed this, we said that we had a problem in terms of product. It's true that our heritage is there, has always been there, and of course this is a very uh, attractive element that brings tourists to our city, but when we said we need, need new products in order to attract tourists, well, when reflecting about this, we realized that we didn't need to invent anything new. We could just enrich our tourist offer using the cultural events of the city. So the cultural events needed to be changed in the sense that we should not only consider a domestic consumption of culture. And this, of course, is important. The city, the citizens need a cultural offer. But we could consider that this cultural um, programming could also be something that could be used as marketing in marketing terms and used uh, in order to attract more tourists. And we can say that there are specific impacts in these terms, like interest throughout Nocturama and the Monkey Week Festival, these three elements of pop music, and this is working very well, but we've also obtained very good results with the flamenco festival every two years. And in the past, we were not doing these things very well because this is the very best flamenco festival in the world and it, we were not using it as an element in order to attract tourists to the city. And in international uh, fairs like FITUR, ITB in Berlin and many other fairs, Tourist, tourism fairs when you do presentations and you show the cultural programming and when you include in the music festivals, of course, there, differential elements are key. Any sort of elements that will lead to or create a unique experience in comparison to other cities where cultural programming is also used for tourism. Well, then, this is, of course, a gain in... Uh, a winning element. So from the tourist point of view, currently we've been recognized as the best destination in 2018 by Lonely Planet. The Daily Times um, includes us in the ranking as one of the cities that needs has to be visited, a must for tourists. Well, we are there in all these rankings, we've been acknowledged in the world of tourism and we've been able to do that because we've used the cultural programming uh, to attract tourists interested by that kind of um, festivals or musical programming. I think, at least in the case of Valencia, we, we were coming from a, from a period of time where when tourism was really, really overrated. So actually, we in the city of Valencia, we invested a lot, like creating this big infrastructure, in attracting big events that well, as well heavily subsidized by public money. No, like having the MTV Winter and then like for the Formula One America's Cup, we had everything. And actually, it didn't work very well. 
it didn't work very well. And we have, I think we have to, to say as well, at least from the, from the perspective of the public sector, that in general there is no even clear indications that tourism in general is very helpful to development of societies. So it's about the quality of tourism, but in general, like cities and countries in the world that there are, uh, especially cities, are a bigger proportion of tourism, normally they are not the more productive and not the more, more innovative either especially when they have this specific approach of heavily investing public money in some specificities that at the next day they can just vanish. And the thing is, and I think what the public sector should do, at least in the context of cities like Valencia and Seville, is simply make a great city for locals. And then tourists will come. And that's our approach. We understand tourists are derivative of the great things that happen in the city, and we experience these values about, about only thinking about tourists. And when you make a great city for locals, great tourists come because are those kind of tourists that actually emerge and are acting as locals. No? And for that, I think music is very important because basically music is public space. No? Music makes strangers gather together and doing something in common, and actually creating a virtual, also a physical space, which is lo loaded with memories and identities and the feelings of a society, you know? So if we use, we, we, use, we can use music also to leverage this, this, this local identity that we have. And I think as well, in the case of public sector, it's very important to open up these spaces to allow also the, 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 the cultural and, and creative scene to develop the, their ideas. No, I think, I think this, is, this is very important. And I think actually we are in a very, very good example about how identity, culture, qualities, and assets of a city can work together with a great festival. So I'm very particularly very happy to come here at the Monkey Week because for me it is amazing. Not only because the creation is this kind of public space where like-minded people like us are gathering and can discuss, but also how it is integrated in the urban fabric of the city. It's just amazing, no? If I compare it with an orthodox festival that gathers just 18,000 people in the outskirts of the city and creates tensions of mobility, and it needs a lot of investment and something like that, that is using the buildings, working around a really great public space that's La Alameda, involving the three main music halls in the city to do the concerts at night. That's just amazing, no? So I think that that can look more as a public strategy than the other, that I think is totally compatible and it's great and we can manage it, but probably yeah, the private sector has enough resources to, manage, to do so. I love him because yeah, he, he gave us so much information. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now is when like, things wow, are starting to warm up. Yes, yes, start, yes. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to, to trigger all I this. I become very passionate about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. You, you just <laughs> shot everywhere. <laughs> bueno, yo me voy a unir a con nuestra amiga Antonia, eh, si nos importa hablar en, en, en castellano. Eh, yo, a mí siempre me gusta eh, primero añadir la importancia de la música. Eh, I was like turismo, talking about the significance of uh, eh, music in tourism because in the end, in many cases, you get to know countries because of the music. I've never been in to Cuba, but uh, because of it, uh, I, I know the culture of maybe the south of the U.S. So sometimes we speak about the uh, development of uh, festivals and tourism development, but the significance of developing local music in cities or countries is very important because uh, we can see, for example, the, the example of Rosalia, who is uh, located Spain at the world scale in the map. So it is very important that uh, in these, around these development, uh, uh, music should be added because it's a way in which we can project ourselves as a Okay. There's been so much information. You know, I had a series of questions here, but now with this speech, I think I'm going to take it from here because I think we have created like a really nice uh, background to build up from here. So um, uh, something that, uh, that really has uh, caught my attention, simply make a great city for locals and tourism will come automatically. You won't have really to invest so much in promotion because the, the new or the modern tourist seems to be coming to places that are great for locals. And that seems to be like uh, the great magnet of cities these days. So how do you, for example, Cindy, um, with Matt Cool, how do you contribute or how do you believe you contribute to making a great city for locals with a proposal like Matt Cool? 
Well, that's a very interesting question because, to be honest, I mean, I totally agree with that um, assessment he just did right here uh, because I think times have changed and, you know, like 20 years ago, the type, we had a mainstream type of tourism where people would just want to come here and go to, I don't know, Portaventura or, you know, that kind of, that kind of tourism. No? And I think that during the past 20 years, generations have changed and therefore society has changed and, then, and therefore what the society looks for has changed too. Obviously because of many, many facts around it, like you, you know, 20 years ago to fly from Madrid to New York was probably a lot of money. Nowadays you can just fly for 500 euros. So um, what I want to say about, well, with all this information I'm trying to give here is that since the tourism has changed, they are definitely looking for new stuff. Okay, they are definitely looking for new experiences and local experiences and local culture and you know local happening of everything. Um, in in Mad Cool, I'm not sure we can we directly contribute to that because at the end, you know, we are not a festival that takes place inside the city. We are a festival that takes place in the outskirts of Madrid. Um, but I do think, for example, that one of the ways we contribute to that is because uh, we offer every, every, per, every foreigner that comes to the festival, we offer them services to have personalized experiences in the city. Okay, from artists, okay, to the audience. So, for example, if you buy a ticket to Madco, our team will contact you and will tell you, hey, you know, would you like to visit um, El Escorial? Would you like to visit uh, Museo del Prado? Would you like to go um, to visit La Latina or Malasaña or any neighborhood that it's amazing? And, and for our surprise, actually a lot of people do. From artists, okay, like I would say 50% of our lineup this year came one, one or two days before to Madrid and actually asked for us to take them to, to places, to know the, about the city. And I would say 50% of the audience did the same. You know, they stayed here. Like, we, we also control that because of the amount of nights they make reservations. So, you know, you know, there's people that come here for two days and they're just coming, you know, to go out to the festival and listen to music. But most of them actually made a reservation of four to five days. So that means those people come here and then they go to uh, the festival and they go to the info point and they ask them and most of the questions are, hey, what restaurant should I go? Where can I find a vegetarian restaurant? Where can I do this? Where can I do that? And you know, our team is definitely there to help us and to encourage this happening because for us, it's very important that the city feels mad cool um, as part of the city. Valga la redundancia. You know, and for us, it's also very important that uh, we feel part of the city too, and we make everyone that is coming to the to the festival feel like they're home and like they can have a good time. So I would say that's the best way we are encouraging this directly. Okay. Indirectly, obviously, you know, we encouraged it because of promotion, because of you know taking. I mean, Matt is from Madrid, so you know every time you go abroad and you basically take the brand road, you're taking Madrid. Yeah. But I think that's the best. Um, Antonio, in your case, um, you said, let's include the cultural agenda of the city, which is very domestic. Let's make it accessible for tourists in order to make the city more interesting. Um, did the culture agenda of the city already existed as a very um, potential interested, interesting factor for the tourist, or did you have to work on it a little in order to make it accessible to tourists? And how much, if you had to work on it to make it accessible to tourists, how much effort did you have to do there? Was it much effort? Was it not so much effort because the culture scene of the city was very healthy already? How did you see this process of making the cultural agenda of the city accessible to, to foreign travelers? Well, I believe, it partly I've, I, I mentioned it when I first spoke, uh, if you do a historic analysis 
que venía desarrollando Sevilla. And on the grounds of the development of Seville uh, as a cultural destination, we may say that the present at the large uh, uh, tourist fairs, the main attractions were repeated. They were always the same, our heritage, our historic environment. But for three years now, we have been uh, throttling up, uh, integrating all our cultural program. El, el, and, uh, and also the new initiatives, the new assets, uh, for example, as, as Monkey Festival. You know that this is the third edition in Seville. But we're doing it, and we're going to go on working on it, but in a more uh, intensified manner, because you've got to, to see that with regards to uh, the issue of indie and pop uh, music festivals, there are three large uh, uh, venues uh, in North Grama, uh, Monkey and Interstellar. So what is uh, of interest for us? To offer a joint package of those three venues, of those three attractions, and be able to offer it to uh, cultural tour operators, tour operators specialized in music, in a joint fashion. So, as I said before, but this leads me to speak about something else. If you look into the, the, the maps of, of Spain, the, the map of festivals, north to south, east to west, we could wonder what is it that someone far from Stockholm or Paris, what would make them make the, uh, bring them into making a decision for a festival. Uh, but in the case of Spain, Spain is full of venues all throughout the country and all throughout the calendar. So independently of, of an important subject such as price, connectivity, it is easier for me to reach Madrid and Albacete. That's also an element, a competing element, and an element which would add or take uh,